Hello and welcome to ACS Golf and this week's review. I'm looking at this, the TaylorMade Stealth 2 Plus Driver. Now, the reason I'm looking at this is because this was one of the best distance drivers last year. Not only because it had amazing distance, you know, low spin, but it had really good forgiveness for what it is. And because it was one of the best drivers of last year, it still means it's still one of the best drivers out there at the moment. Don't be fooled by all these videos saying, you know, this is the best thing since we've ever produced and et cetera, et cetera. You know, the amount that they can improve each year is minimal. And that's why you see so many tall players playing old equipment because it just performs just as well as the newer stuff. So you could potentially save yourself a lot of money if you're looking for this type of driver by buying this one over the latest model out at the moment because you can still pick these up brand new in shops and also most likely get fitted for them as well so that's why i picked it up so as always we'll have a closer look at the club then we'll get down to well back in here sorry we'll go from the technology get down to the range i'll throw some figures at you and then come back here for the acs golf scale and i'm not gonna lie it did really surprise me to be honest because i'm not i have not got the swing speed for this club really you know it's a low spin club you know i can get over average of 100 every now and again miles per hour swing speed but a lot of the time i'm around that 98 97 point so technically this shouldn't work for me but you know from the numbers and the range and if you follow me on instagram you'll know it was very very impressive so yes so as always let's have a closer look at this club So there you go, and a good looking club. I love the stealth range for looks, I really do. I've always loved that red face, love the bottom. I think this actually probably looks even better than the stealth two, the normal one that I actually had in the bag all of last year. And I personally, this is just me, a lot of people watching this probably won't agree, I think these look better than the QI10s they've just released. You know, I just prefer the sole, and I, prefer, I, I like the red face. You know, I know they put that blue one in there, but anyway, a very good looking club i will say though don't get me wrong this is a great head cover but if you've not seen the qi10 which i actually have one i'm looking at it right there it's over there which i'll be releasing a view in the next couple of weeks so remember to subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out on that i will say the qi10 head cover is a little bit to be honest nicer than the stealth even though this is a lovely head cover there you go got the words out there now Let's get into all the technology that is in this club. And as you know, it is tailor-made, so it is jam-packed with it. So, Stealth 2 Carbon Wood. So, more carbon, more forgiveness, which is a whole range thing they did last year. You know, the idea of, you know, first year when they brought out the Stealth, it was all about, look, carbon face, carbon this, carbon that. Second year, it's like forgiveness, you know, distance and forgiveness. And then this year, it's all about that sort of QI 10. So Quest for inertia of 10,000, which they did make only in one of their drivers, which I will mention in the review later on. So don't be fooled with that. Not all of them have 10K. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. So yeah, so there you go. More carbon, more forgive, forgiveness. With Stealth, we pushed past the limits of titanium and welcomed golfers around the world to carbon wood age. So how far are we willing to take it? Way past far and into forgiveness, introducing the all new two Stealth 2 Plus, combining the elements of speed and forgiveness to unlock forgiveness. Sounds amazing. It's all what we want, you know, more distance and more forgiveness. Who can complain with that? So they've got a new 60 times carbon twisted face. So twist face being in there since. Oh, I don't know when when did TaylorMade leave down the comments down below if you remember where TaylorMade brought in the twist face. I definitely know it's a sim. Was it in the M6 before that? Was it in the M2? I don't think. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below if you can remember because off the top of my head I cannot. But anyway, twist face been in here for years. The idea to help hit that sort of straighter ball flights from off hits rather than slicing it, etc., etc. So new 60 times carbon twist face. It was already fast. Now we've made it even more forgiving. 
Building on the speed producing success of the original six times carbon twist face, in the new face design features enhanced take on inverted cone technology to help maintain ball speed on off centered hits and increase forgiveness. There you go. So more carbon than ever. I mean, there's carbon here, carbon crown, obviously carbon face. So compared to the original carbon wood, Stealth 2 Plus utilizes 75% more carbon. It's constructed using a carbon, a new carbon reinforced composite ring. So there you go, goes all the way around here. Um, and it collectively features more of the lightweight material than any drive in tailor-made history. Our advanced application of carbon allows us to redistribute of mass for more forgiveness stability. So that's the whole reason for carbon. The whole reason for carbon is that they can, it's lighter than titanium, lighter than the normal materials they make, so they can move the mass around, you know. So in this case, we've got the 15 gram weight there, movable there, but you've also still got a 15 gram weight at the back for that little added forgiveness and higher MOI. So premium sound, our team of engineers obsess over creating the perfect sound with Taylor 2 Stealth 2 Plus. Even factoring carbon sole thickness into the equation. In addition, we use a combination of curvature, shape, and internal stiffening ribs to finely tune acoustics, delivering a sound profile that is both bright and powerful. I love the sound of this. Too far, I really do. And unfortunately, on the range, you're going to see in a second, I had to mute the the feet there. Well, the viewings from that, the video, so you can't hear the sound of it. But do check out my review of the Stealth 2, um, because it's pretty much exactly the same as that. You know, very low very dull sorry thud noise because of the carbon but i really quite like it i really do you know and obviously they're invested in it as well do i think sound is that important probably i think if you're watching this you know if you've got something that's the loudest thing in the earth you know some people might like that um but others may not so it's good you know they're going to that premium sound bit and it, it does for me sound very nice i you know been using the stealth as i mentioned use the stealth too last year I was really enjoying the sound of it. So personalized trajectory and performance, a technology technology pioneered by TaylorMade returns to the forefront with the Stealth 2 Plus. The sliding weight track includes 15 gram weight that can be positioned to your preferred shop shape. While the F FCT loft sleeve is used to optimize launch and trajectory. So there you go, standard loft sleeve there. It can go all the way up by two degrees you can go all the way down by two degrees which for this personally helps you know 10.5 degree head i could loft this up to two degrees so even though you know i don't necessarily have the swing speed you know to get that ball and keep it in the air to get the spin up i am able to really crank it up to possibly get the launch correct or have the launch a little bit higher than it normally would to maximize that carry distance so really good there and obviously it does affect though the lie of it you know, if you go down by two degrees, it tends to open the club face a little bit. If you go up by two degrees, it tends to close it a little bit, which for me actually didn't really mind because this is all more, they say neutral, but I think it's slightly just a little bit more open, which you do find with better player clubs, which this is. So that sort of two degrees increase just sort of close the face a little bit for me. So yeah, really good. You know, comparing this to the other clubs, the sliding weight track there, which I didn't have in the Sim 2, by the way. You know, for me, the first Stealth range was very much, a, pretty much a carbon copy of the Sim range, but with a carbon face. The Sim 2 again, the, the sorry, the Stealth 2 again was sort of a carbon copy of the Sim 2 range, again with a carbon face. But in the Sim 2, you didn't have this sliding weight. However, I think if you're looking at this club, the Sim 2, if you don't care about the sliding weight, the Slim, Sim 2 is a great option out there if you don't want to get this. However, they are very similar now, and because the Sim 2 is such a popular club on the second hand market, they're pretty similar as well. But I just thought I'd mention the Sim 2 in it, like I mentioned, I was going to mention before. Another option would be the Sim 2. The tailor made Sim version of this, just a heads up with a movable weight. Bomber, absolute bomber, but not a lot of forgiveness in it. So do be warned about that. So if you're thinking, all right, I'll go for the Sim, you know, because that's got the movable weight, save myself a bit of money. Yes, if you're hitting out of middle face, face, fantastic. If you're not, you will be punished. And the same for the Stealth Plus, to be fair. Well, this one, there is a decent amount of forgiveness in it. Uh, head size, 460cc. Uh, you know, their description, tailor-made. You know, go spin low, launch mid, forgiveness high. 
Forgiveness for this head is high, but we'll go into my ACS ratings later. Um, you can get this right-handed in eight degrees. You can't get it in left-handed eight degrees. And then right and left-handed nine and 10.5. So you can't get a 12 degree head on this, which makes sense to be fair. You know, to be fair, I'd love a 12 degree head because I'd loft up 14 and get even more distance with it. But that's just me and my dodgy swing. Anyway, okay. So there's all the technology that's in here. Now let's get to the range. I'm going to throw some figures at you and then come back here for the ACS golf scale. All right, see you in a bit. So here we are down the range. Now, just to say, Trace only worked unfortunately on a few of these shots, and also I did have to mute the noise. So if you're thinking about what this club sounds like, it's very much like the sort of normal stealth, uh, stealth two as well that I reviewed last year. You know, very much that sort of dull, quite satisfying carbon noise. You know, I personally really do quite like it. Now, getting into those figures. So on average, I had a carry of 219 yards, total distance 260 yards, ball speed 149 miles per hour, launch angle 10 and height 54 feet with a swing, swing speed of 98 miles per hour. Now, that's great, you know, longest on the day was actually carried 240 yards, total distance of 279 yards, ball speed 156 miles per hour, um, launch 9 degrees, height 58 feet, and that was with a swing speed of 103 miles per hour. So if you really go for this driver, it really does go. But for me, the one issue here is potentially, you know, I'm not getting the... You know the spin I'd require for my driver, so if I don't quite get the launch right, which I did one of those shots, you know, have great rollout, but you know, in the winter in the UK, that won't help me at all. So there you go. <laughs> Let's be honest, some amazing figures from this. You know, on for me, average two hundred and fifty yards is what I'm sort of looking for. You know, two hundred and sixty on the day on average, fantastic. Longest two hundred and seventy nine. That's probably one of the longest drives I've hit for a while. I'm not going to lie. I have hit over 300 the odd time in my life, but um, nice and flexible, nice warm weather, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, 279, really happy with that. Ball speed 156 miles per hour on that longest one. Great. Now, average 149. So it does show there that, you know, that ball speed can drop down a little bit. So even though it is forgiving for this, it is still, you know, it's not going to be the most forgiving model out there, which did show. And my issue as well is there's quite a few shots, you know, carry 206, 219. You know, when I really got this right, to get that 240 carry, 241 carry I got in as well, you know, 232 is fantastic. But when I didn't quite get that ball flight right, you know, because I don't have the spin to keep it in the air, you know, a lot of those shots, as one of the shots that I just showed you, comes out like a low bullet and just won't right. So I really do lose carry distance. If it's rolling down the middle of the fairway and it's summer, it's still going to go 250, 260 yards. In winter, it will not. You know, if it's wet, spring, whatever, and if it's not on the fairway, it's probably a good thing. I don't want to go that far if it's not on the fairway, but, you know, there's just no real carry distance there if I'm not careful with it, which I'm going to answer at the end of this video if it's going to go in my bag or not, because I did sell my YouTube channel, uh, Instagram channel, remember, ACS Golf Instagram channel, if you're not already following that. That I was going to put this in the bag because it's performing so well at the range, but I might have changed my mind at the end of that. Well, now, so I'll let you know at the end of this video. Anyway, let's get into the ACS golf scale. So remember, we got distance, feel, looks, price, and forgiveness. Five being the worst, one, no, five being the best, one being the worst. How have you know? I've been doing this for years now and I still forget that. So five being the best, one being the worst. So distance. You know, with that average 260, you know, the furthest I've ever hit, well, recently as well, 279, I've given this a 5 out of 5. This is a distance monster. It was one of the longest last year. It will be one of the longest this year, which you expect when it comes down to these type of golf clubs, tailor-made. You know, absolutely amazing, 5 out of 5. Can't complain. It is a distance machine. If you can get the launch right with this, the spin right with this, you're going to be hitting some of the longest drives you have ever done. Now, on to feel. So feel, I've given it 3.5 out of 5. I gave the original Stealth the same. It feels a little bit different with this carbon face. It's a lot of the times, if I do a miss hit that's not quite in the middle, I don't really know that. Obviously, if I do a bad miss hit, which my bad one is up here, top right, or top right there, if you're yeah, looking away from it right on the toe you do feel it but you know 
MOI is good enough to actually to be fair. I hit that quite a few times and it stayed out straight to be honest. So I was happy with that. But yeah, around the face. It feels really nice. I do enjoy the feel. You know, got Heather Stealth too, like I said, in the bag and hold of last year. But they are definitely for me anyway, better feeling drivers out there, for example, such as Cobra. You know, the Aerojet, I thought was a great feeling driver last year. We've got the dark speed in the bag at the moment. Great feeling driver. So there you go. Moving on to looks. Looks I've given this a five out of five. I love the looks of this a good few reasons. Number one, I love the colours. I love the red. You know, I, I really do like that track there. It just looks, you know, just looks like a, a machine, basically. <laughs> like a really, you know, bad boy driver that's gonna go far when you see a track like that at the front of it. Um, you know, like love the colour schemes, love the top, you know, with that stealth. No, even though it's got a glossy head, glossy top, which I don't normally like because you can, as you can see, you can see the reflection of the window outside. You know, I love the fact they've got the stealth along the side of it. You know, that as well, you can see the alignment aid. I love the red face and I like, love the shape. I really do enjoy, you know, the low spin driver's shape. I don't like a driver that's more forgiving than elongated at the back, even though the Cobra, to be fair, that I'm using is a little bit more like that. I much prefer that squat shape. So for me, I love it. I love the looks of it. I think it's a great driver. And looking down at it, I just, I just do. I love it. So for me, it is a five out of five. I've even written down a 4.5 actually when I was originally doing this review, but I've had to put, change it to five because I love it. I think it looks absolutely great. Now on to forgiveness. So forgiveness, you know, they're pushing forgiveness last year, you know, forgiveness, you know, and a lot of these low spinning drivers now do have a lot of forgiveness in it. You know, I reviewed the Srixen um, ZX5 LS Mark II, you know, check out the channel for that. Great amount of forgiveness in that for what it is, even though that's a low spin bomber. And it's the same with this, you know, I've given it a 3.5 out of five. Now you could say, well, hold on, that's 3.5 out of five. It's not five, it's not four. This isn't going to have the forgiveness in as your sort of your ping, you know, G430 10K example. It's not going to have the same forgiveness in as your 10K drivers. It just doesn't. But for what it is, 3.5 in my mind is a very, very good rating. And, you know, I was looking at the, someone quote on me this, well, tell me if I'm wrong with this, but I read something the other day as well, that this actually still managed to get up to 77 K MOI, which again for a driver like this with the shape of this, with the weight at the front, you know, don't get me wrong, you still got speed pocket technology and all this sort of stuff. That's a great rating in my mind, really is, and that's why I'm giving it 3.5 out of five. The type of people who will be looking to play this club, you know, the ones the faster swing speeder, you know, looking for that sort of more playable club, you know, where you can move the weight to draw and fade to get that settings, which does work, by the way. I will mention that as well, because I did move it around, have a little bit of fiddle with it. You know, then it has got enough forgiveness and more. It really, really does. So really great, 3.5 out of 5. Now on to price. Price, I've given this a 4 out of 5. I think it's a good deal, you know. As I mentioned, technology hasn't moved massively, so you could go for the Sim 2, or if you really want to save your money, you can go from the M2 tailor-made up, to be fair, and you do have like the M5, the M3, um, and the M1, which will have that adjustability just like this. Um, so you can save your money, yourself some money out there, but I think four out of five for this. eBay, you're looking at 247 pounds. I've seen one for 280 pounds, so 258. So you're looking around that sort of 300, Dollars, so that's sort of three hundred twenty-five dollars. Golf bidder with second-hand store over here, it's about two hundred fifty pounds, about three hundred fifteen dollars, which is pretty good, you know, for a driver last year. You know, not bad at all. Doesn't compare to the Cobras though, and that's why I haven't given it a higher rating. Cobras second-hand, they fall, <laughs> even though they're really good. So like the Aero J can get under two hundred pounds normally second-hand over here in the UK, which that's why I haven't given it a higher rating. But overall, four out of five. And also, because brand new over here in the UK at the moment, I've seen it go to £349. I've seen it go for £379. Brand new, go walk in a shop, give it a test, and then buy it. You know, and I've also seen it in the US on TaylorMade's website 
for $399. So I'm sure over in the US you can probably find a few more stores that sell it cheaper than that. So four out of five. I think it's a really good price for a very, very good driver to be fair. And it's another one that I've sort of spoken through and I feel like I need to change, to be honest. But I did all these the other day and I was really happy with what I've done, but I just think for how good this driver is, no, nah, stick it as four or five. Because I look at bargains, you know, five out of five for me is a really good bargain. You know, you're picking something up for like 50 pounds. So we'll keep it a four out of five, even though it is creeping up to that 4.5 out of five for my rating anyway. But overall, a great driver. So overall for the Stealth 2 Plus, if you're looking for that low bomber, you know, low spin bomber, you've got the right launch angle, you've got the swing speed for it. This is fantastic and a really good option to go out and buy now rather than getting the QI-10, which shows by the length of this video, I always say if I have a really long video, you see it pop up on the page, you know that it's a good club because I can't stop talking about it. And it's the same with this. Now, just though quickly, am I gonna put it in a bag? Like I said on Instagram, I said I was going to, you know, most consistent I've been with well driver this year to be fair I'm really trying to push down my scores at the moment um even though I love the Cobra I love the feel of it I love the looks of it and I'm just like should I put it in the bag but I just know that with my bad shots I'm not getting it in the air I'm gonna be quite punished so haven't quite made a decision there yet um you know if I get the launch right and swing for it like I can swing for it then I'm going to get some really good results but you know do I feel I'm going to do that after walking around 17 holes you know it's the last last hole it's the 18th I've had a bag on my back the whole time am I going to be swinging at my maximum speed am I going to be able to get it to 100 which I know I can you know the quickest swing speed I did was 102.9 miles per hour you know am I going to be able to hit that on the last hole after hitting what I know how many shots I would have been having like 75 shots 70 shots you know that includes putting by the way <laughs> I don't I don't have 75 shots every round unless I've done something horrendously wrong um but but yeah am I gonna is my back gonna take it am I gonna have the energy to do it and that's for me to really work out but overall I do think it's an amazing driver and to be fair if it does go in the bag, I do get the confidence up enough to use it all the time. I know I won't be disappointed. But yeah, I'll post something on Instagram over the next couple of days about my decision because I have changed something in the Cobra that could be a game changer that keeps this out of the bag. Well, for me, anyway. All right, guys. Now, as I've mentioned already, a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, let me know in the comments down below, you know, do you play TaylorMade? You know, are you looking for this low spin driver? And if so, you know, are you going to give this a go? And if you do, let me know how it goes. And as always, remember to subscribe to the channel, guys, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on the weekly ACS golf reviews and bonus videos that I have coming up over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully, hopefully, in the summer when the weather gets really nice over in the UK, I will start putting up some, uh, some well, Holes that I'm playing in some of the local courses as well. All right, guys, I'll catch you soon for the next ACS Golf video. See you then. Bye bye.